Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. What's that? We're not at the house anymore. What do you mean? We're at a house. We're at our new house. Okay, so I just thought a change of venue would be nice for at least today's introduction. I'm not sure if we'll do all of our intros up here yet, or if we'll wait till we don't have a dirt threshold, ahem hem, and maybe we'll do our intros out here once we have a facade on our house. Now we spent the last several episodes doing a lot of placing of blocks, of using of resources that we've acquired over the course of the game, as well as specifically for these episodes. And we've gotten a lot done, and we totally don't have dirt thresholds still. Nope, not us. We've built our kitchen, we've built our living room, and over here, we've built our storage room. Of course, they're not really hooked up to each other yet, but that's okay. That will happen, and there is still nothing being stored here. I am living out of a bunch of trunks over here and the chests over in the original house. But that's, that's, that's a problem for later. Today's problem is that, one, we're kind of out of a lot of the materials that I want to use for building more parts of the house, and we have a lot more rooms to go, and I'd like to kind of build up a stockpile of building resources before we go ahead and start building out the rest of our house. Hang on, I'm hungry. Ah, there we go. The second thing is that there are some materials that we haven't come across, some more exotic materials, that I would like to get at least a couple of, some to just investigate and to show them to you and maybe find a place for them later, and others for more immediate use, because there is a particular roof style I would like to put on our house here, and it's one that's kind of hard to come by. And hopefully we'll get to see that today. There's actually no guarantee that we'll find what we're looking for today. So today might be a bit of an exploratory episode where we talk about some of the things you can find in some of the more interesting, more dangerous, more out-of-the-way places. Now I'm going to go and make some food and make it daytime again because it's afternoon. But in the morning, we're going to go and visit a couple places that we've already been to and talk about some of the more interesting things we can find there. All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and head out. And we're bringing with us a pot full of porridge with some mashed carrots. We're using some of those. And onions. We'll go ahead and have a meal and fill our bowl while we're at it. There we go. I'm also bringing along most of our usual goods, all of our normal tools. I'm also bringing along our gears because some of these materials we're going to have to buy. I'm also bringing along a basket with a bit of firewood so we can cook some more, some more food to cook with, and a spare bismuth bronze axe because, well, you'll see. Okay, let's head out. Ooh, our larch trees are growing. Very nice. Now, our first destination is right up here. It's an old, I wouldn't say stomping ground of ours, but an old place we visited. And in it, we found a lot of interesting and exotic crafts and goods, and some friends, of course. Hopefully none today. I don't hear any. But you'll see that there are some things we didn't actually loot while we were down here. Among them, these granite stone blocks. These aren't anything special. We can make them, but they're kind of actually cheaper to pick up, you know, here. There are also these collapsed chests, and while in the base game we can't... Ooh, hello. We can't do much with them. Since we have the carry-on mod, we can actually carry them with us, including on our backs if we wanted to, and place them down again. We can use them for decoration because once they're empty, actually once they're, well, once they exist, you can't put anything back in them. It doesn't let you. But there are some other exotic things down here. For instance, these aged logs. And this is one reason why I brought our axe with us. These are logs that you can only find in treasure, or rather in ruins specifically, and in part of their structures. And it has this sort of mottled green moldy look with a rather pale interior, which is interesting considering that what this breaks down into is this. Well, mostly. This is actually a special piece of wood that has some blue wallpaper on one side, like that. And this wallpaper doesn't come off. And it's difficult to get more of this, but if you can, it can be an interesting thing to decorate with. 
Now, I'm not interested in decorating with this, but I am going to take this with us. I am also going to go ahead and we're going to mine out, or rather chop out, all of these logs and bring them with us, because if we want to use them later, I'd rather have them with us rather than, you know, sitting out here waiting for us to go pick them up. Now, another exotic find, exotic in some ways, are these aged wooden tables and chairs. And I say exotic mostly in that you can't craft them. You can make the regular tables that are a nice pale color and don't have a tablecloth on them. And the same with these chairs, which actually come in a myriad of colors. But these aged ones are special. You cannot find them or craft them anywhere except in these ruins. So we'll take them too. And I forgot a bed, so you come with us as well. I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping out all of these logs and bringing them with us. And I may also bring along a stack of these granite stone bricks, although I might just leave them to come back for later. I know, I know. I just said I didn't want to, but I don't want to fill up on this sort of more mundane stuff. Because we can make the granite bricks ourselves. Alright, all done and all packed up. I did decide to leave the stone brick here because, again, we can just make it ourselves. Now, our next port of call is going to be a bit farther out, so I'm going to probably cut, and then we'll see you when we get there. But we're going to go over to a ruin we found during our big exploration episode. We went around this whole area, met all of these traders, and went to several of these ruins, and nearly got eaten by a bear somewhere up in here. And we're going to swing by probably this ruin, and then down to this building materials trader, and maybe we'll go the opposite direction. Maybe we'll go to him first, and then up. Yeah, that might be the wise choice. I'll see you there. Okay, folks, we are right here. And it was a bit of an ordeal getting here. And of course, as soon as I started swimming across the ocean, we got this storm notice. So I'm actually going to hang out probably... Probably not here, actually. But we will just sleep through the storm this time around. And I will show you that. But this fellow can occasionally have some interesting stuff. If we want ancient pillars, well, we can find a few of them out in the wild. But for a steady supply, building materials traders are our key. We can make our own rush matting. We don't have to come to them for that. So if you're looking for a very simple rug, don't bother buying it. If you need wallpaper, this is your place to go. It comes in six or seven colors, including yellow and purple and green and blue. So keep an eye out at Building Materials Traders for that. And if you're looking for brown or red clay, these guys are your only hope. And this guy is not my hope today. Maybe he'll have new goods in three days. But I was hoping to get a hold of some red clay shingles, because I think having some red clay shingles to put on the front of our house would be amazing, especially kind of tucked underneath a bit of the green sod roofing i think that could look really really nice so what we'll do is we'll continue our episode and we will come back here in a few days and see if he's cycled out his goods yes thank you very much but maybe there's a chance that we might also find some more building materials traders because of some of the other exploration we will do in this episode and maybe in the next couple episodes too okay so we're going to go up to this ruin that we found before go ahead and mark it on the map here if I can get you to pin there we go and we will probably just spend the night or the yeah I guess the night in the ruin here so this is the ruin that we found well one of the many that we found while we were out and about on our little exploration let's drop a few torches around here just to keep any potential creepy crawlies at bay don't need anybody weird spawning here I'm weird enough. And if you are looking for things like cobwebs, or aged torch holders, or aged wood planks. Now, we could, if we had a saw with us, we could break down these aged logs into the wood planks, but I don't recommend it because you can't get them back once you do. Once you turn them into planks, they don't go back into log form. And unless you really don't need the logs, or you really do need the aged wood planks, you're probably better off just keeping an eye out for new ruins, because plenty of ruins have aged wooden planks, but fewer have the aged logs. These also have some additional... Uh, the word goodies is kind of strong, but yeah. 
I'm going to go ahead and probably take a few of these things and dump out maybe some of this dirt that we don't need here and generally just rejigger my inventory. But I'm going to go ahead and take these wood planks because I think some of these might be handy for our builds. Now you also see here that we have some granite cobble skull. This is another unique block that you'll only find in ruins and it comes in a few flavors. I know of granite, sandstone, andesite, and chalk, but I think I think that's it. So if you're looking for anything creepy like this to decorate maybe a mausoleum like in the first season or if you just want to have some creepy decorations for your home these ruins are the place to come. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a whole bunch of these and we'll take them with us on the rest of our journey. So here we are about three minutes before the storm hits as each hour is about two minutes of real time. Actually, it is exactly two minutes of real time. Oh, we just levitated it there a bit. Neat. If you don't enable the sleeping through storms through the initial world creation menu, then you will need to do it as a command in the console, which is available on the wiki. If you're going to sleep through storms, I recommend that you wait until about 15 to 10 in-game minutes, so about 30 seconds, before the storm hits. Because there's a bit of a speed up of time that's a gradual speed up when you get into bed, and you want to be fully sped up in time by the time the storm hits. That way you minimize the chances of things spawning around you. Now, you'll also see that our little bunker here is quite small. Just in case your timing is off, you want to sort of have as small of an area as possible for drifters to spawn, just so that they're less likely to spawn there. There's a whole big wide area around us of map that can spawn on. They'll spawn about in this radius around us. And there's a whole lot of space above us on this nice green terrain. So it's less likely they're going to spawn down here in these like nine or 10 different squares. So this should keep us safe. Even if maybe one does spawn, we can handle them with our shield and maybe a sword in the dark, apparently. Maybe we'll leave you there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and we will sleep through the storm and hopefully we'll come out unscathed. I did also pick up that age torch holder and I have a couple pieces of bony soil I got from a ruin along the way. But everything else has been packed into the basket on our back. I'm not sure you can see it. There you can, just barely. And we're gonna wait just until we hit about, there we go. The imminent warning is there. If you're not using the, or a clock mod, then when you see the imminent warning, go ahead and count down from 30. And when you hit zero, go ahead and sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna just wait here for a second, 18, 15, and you could sleep now. I like to wait till 10 personally. And there we go, we're gonna go ahead and sleep. And we'll get a very brief moment of the creepy, creepy music. Keep your ear out for any blah, 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 blah sounds. But in general, there it goes. And it is now, unfortunately, high rift activity, which is a shame. But I don't hear any sounds of drifters. So we made it through pretty safe and sound. And I'm actually going to head back to our home. One, because our inventory is pretty darn full. And two, because the next leg of our journey, I think, is going to be better started from our home because our next location, our next target, is going to be through one of our translocators here. So, I will see all of you at home when we have a much lighter pack. I am bringing all of you back here for just a moment because look at this. Now, I know I mentioned before, but it is important to keep your eyes open even if you're going around places you've been before because typically, the first time you go through an area, you're not going to be looking for new stuff. You're looking out for danger, right? Looking out for bears, looking out for wolves, you know, pitfalls, that kind of thing. But as you travel through an area more and more, you'll kind of be able to lift your eyes to the landscape around you, and you will spot things you did not spot before, which in our case is, of course, this Terra Preta. So this is definitely something we want to bring with us. Let's go ahead and grab it after I determine what we're throwing out. Hmm. 
How about this beanade? Sorry, beanade. And now we're one step closer to our perfect farms. All right, let's get home. All right, folks, it is the next day. We're back home. Inventory is empty. Backpack, likewise empty. And we are putting all of our stuff up in this chest for later perusal. Currently unorganized. Now, I had thought that we were going to go through one of our nearby translocators, but it turns out we need to go through our translocator out here to get to where I want to go. So, I will go over there and I'll meet you all there. And actually, I'll meet you on the other side. Oh my. I heard that one. They're yelling at me. But I spent the rest of the day around the house doing some chores, including things like refreshing our bees. I finally harvested them for the first time this year. I just haven't been keeping up on it because we have a ton of beeswax. And don't really need a ton more, but since we are going to be working on our house in the near future, we're going to want some more candles for lanterns. So I figured it was a prime time to go ahead and do that. Anyway, like I said, I will see all of you on the other side of that translocator. Wolf City over there. Yowzer. Okay, folks, so here we are. And it looks like we have indeed gotten all of these chests before. And we haven't actually dug up from here before. Wow, okay. Good thing I have a bunch of ladders. I'm going to go ahead and we'll dig up from here, but I want to go up to here. Well, first to our trader friend, see what they have. And then this set of ruins here. This is a village. You often find things in ruined villages that you won't find in most other ruins, at least surface ruins. Sometimes you'll find similar things in subterranean ruins, but the surface ruin villages are really where it's at. Anyway, I'll see all of you at the top. Hopefully we have enough ladders. And we will get out of this hole here. Alright everyone, we've made it up to the surface. Finally. Next to an interesting little waterfall. Alright, let's get up here and let's go visit our... Well, not our, but that trader up there. And then we will go take a look at those ruins. Look at this nice plain. This nice flat plain. Wow. And that mountain is pretty cool looking. Those things cut into it. Check it out. Wow. Alright. And that bear. Oh, good. The bear between us and our target. What are you? You are a commodities trader. Hello. Uh, let's go here and trade. Stretch. So Stretch is buying aged crates and ore vessels and is selling lots of linen. You must have a tailor friend somewhere around here, huh? I think we need to probably deal with this bear. Although our target's actually over there. So maybe this bear won't bother us too, too much. Let's just, let's hope for the best, huh? That always works out. Is that a fruit tree I see? I think it might be. With some fruit that are not yet ripe, but worth investigating. Oh, there's another fruit tree. Look at that. Where is that bear? I am very nervous about that bear just popping out on us. I saw him drop into the ground like he's sleeping. I'm just going to uh, tear out some of these leaves here before we go to this tree. Ah, I don't know where that bear is. Drive me nuts. Anyway. This is a pear tree, and this is what it looks like when a pear tree is fruiting. Now, we have 16 and a half days before these fruits are ready for picking, but if we remember, we might be able to come back here and get a good amount of fruit, because these will provide gobs and gobs of fruit. Now, this tree, not so much. It is pretty small, pretty young, but next year, it will provide even more fruit. And each fruit tree only fruits once per year, so you have to make sure that you are there when it is fruiting. But look at this. Oh yes, this is a big set of ruins. And like I said, ruined villages tend to have 
more interesting ruins in them. Because unlike most of the ruins that you'll find just by themselves, we are more likely to find cellars or basements here. Especially if we dig under the larger areas. Oh boy, some rye. But if we dig under the larger areas that have like floors or perhaps down here, where there are multiple vessels, we may find ourselves a cellar. Let's investigate. Now, first of all, we are going to get this bony soil for later panning. I'm going to go ahead and grab this stuff here too on the outside. And just having stone underneath here isn't necessarily an indicator that there's a basement below, but I'm pretty sure that one of these will have a basement, and look at that. Uh, okay, this one not so much. Once you hit dirt, you're much less likely to have a basement. Yeah. And once you hit stone, no basement. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a basement to say out here. There could be a small chamber waiting for us under here. Like that. Look at that. My goodness. All right. Let's get some of this bony soil out of the way and the sand. Oh, this is a jackpot. And forage with some sandstone and reeds. Forage with... Oh, a lot of reeds. Okay. Game's telling me something. He wants me to harvest more bees. All right. So here we have... Ooh. Double ooh. Okay. So bookshelves are an interesting block. This is the Legacy Bookshelf. These were in the game up to, well, they've been in the game for a while, but now we have some more interactive bookshelves, but these are still good for decoration. And their books will be placed facing whatever direction like you're facing, and depending on what block you place them on, they will get different books. If we put it here, we'll get the same books every time. If we move it, say, up to here, well, we'll get an empty shelf in this case but it is sort of block dependent on what books show up. We have another forge vessel with a lot of blue clay and some flint and a forge vessel with, ooh, ah, with some horsetail poultices from linen and some stones. We also have here an owl chest and this is a bit of decoration slash storage Go ahead and grab this necklace, but I can't wear it, so we're going to throw these in here, throw those in there, and then we'll break this owl chest so we can take a look at it. So here we go, we have an owl chest, as you can see, it has sort of a little owl face on it. And these are decorative, some traders will buy them for about 10 gears, but I find I prefer to decorate with these because these are rare enough that I don't find myself having enough to just sell. So. We're going to keep this guy and use it for decoration. All right, on to the next one. This is an ore vessel, and we already have what looks like a, <laughs> a chamber down here that's already opened up to the water. Someone didn't pay their flood insurance. We have some ore here. Looks like Galena. Very nice. You don't get much ore from these ore vessels, but it is fun to break them just to see what's there. I'm going to fill this in with dirt to get rid of most of the water here. There we are. And down here we have forage and forage. We'll break them just to sort of see what's here. More reeds and some fire clay. More reeds, fire clay, and grass. Alright. Not super exciting. And I don't think you'll typically find any secret chambers down in these sort of blacksmith homes, but it is worth just checking, just to be sure. Now, what have we over here? Oh, we have a different one. We have what looks to be the remains of maybe a house. It's got a second floor, maybe a watchtower here. And some kind of doorway down there with those chiseled or polished granite rock slabs. We have a seed vessel and a forage vessel. So I'm going to guess, yeah, a home, probably. We have sticks and clay. We're going to start removing the sticks and the clay from our inventory. And the seed vessel, we get... Ooh, cabbage seeds. Not bad. Six of them. Not quite what I was hoping for, because we already have plenty of cabbage seeds, but this is pretty good. Now, again, I don't know if there is a basement to this, but I say we find out. I think we might. 
Yeah, look at this. What have we down here? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. So you'll find in some of these, they have piles of junk metal, like we found in Transicators, and these will give us the metal parts for fixing Transicators, among other things. And we haven't touched on what those other things are yet, but we will. We have found a second aged torch holder. And if you're in the early game, these are a great resource. These are excellent to find in the early game because they can give you your first permanent-ish light sources by, you know, you can put them on the wall, put a torch in them, and it's a permanent light source. So if you are in the early game and you happen to spot one of these villages on your map, make sure you go and check it out because you might find some really handy stuff. Speaking of handy stuff, we have these aged wooden beds or this aged wooden bed specifically. And I think no more no more basement here, I think. Yeah, I think we're about done here. Now these are unique in that one, you cannot craft them. They are treasure only, but they let you sleep for up to 9.5 hours. Our hay bed gives us seven hours of sleep. The fancy bed we have at home, the wooden bed, gives us eight and a half. These will give us up to nine and a half hours. So if we need it, can get a good amount of sleep from one of these beds. So it is getting on toward nightfall, so I'm probably going to spend the night here, maybe even use our new aged bed, I don't know. And then I'll see all of you in the morning as we check out this ruin here, and I think I saw one more kind of hidden under these trees, but I'll go take a look. It might just be this last one. And then I will also take a look around the map while we are waiting for night to fall, and see if there's anything else of interest to be looked at while we are up here. See you all in the morning. All right, good morning, everyone. We are back. And it is, like I said, morning. Now, I did hear a few moments ago some wolves howling. So we're going to have to be a little bit more careful. And they were coming from that direction, I think. Uh, no, that direction. Which is kind of right where we want to go. Right up with that ruin up there. And is that a bear I spy? I think it might be. Look at that. That is way too close for comfort. Or no, is that two pigs? Let's find out. That is two pigs. Okay. Not a bear. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get up here. We're going to drop a couple ladders in case we find wolves. Let's get to the top of this little hillock here and see if we can spot the wolves before they spot us. I don't see any, so I'm going to hope that they are over in those trees there and not in these trees here. But we have the last and the largest of the... Ooh, look at that of the ruins here. It has some path work. It has a forge over here. It has a little building or dome here with a storage vessel Ooh, with some money in it. Not too shabby. And this, I do know, always has a basement. Some additional interesting goodies. Again, a aged wooden bed and a forge vessel <laughs> with some more of the same old stuff. Another forge vessel, and a loam planter. This is the only kind of place where you'll find loam planter. Ooh, we have chalk stones, too. Ooh, that's not bad. And again, I don't think these have anything further you dig in any direction. No. You are, like, dead ahead that way. Wow. I am fairly certain these wolves are like right inside these trees here. And there's that bear in the distance again. Ah, there's the wolf cub right there. Well, I did not spot anything else to look on the map here. So I'm thinking it's time for us to hightail at home away from these wolves or... There's the wolf. All right. But I was thinking maybe we could go on a bit of a jaunt up to the northeast here through these fields. Where we will have some great 
visibility, and we can uncover a lot of land. Speaking of uncovering land, if you really want to cheese it a bit, you can always go into your settings and turn up your view distance to the maximum. That will force the game to generate chunks and update chunks in a larger radius around you. Now, I'm not going to do that. I think it's a little bit cheaty, but at some point we may just do it for educational purposes. Oh, there's a bear. Look at that. He's going to catch that rabbit, isn't he? A lot of bears out here, not going to lie. I'm not, uh, not super fond of that. Got a tool vessel here with uh, nothing in it. <laughs> nothing worth saving. And we should have another tool vessel in here. Yeah, oh, farming vessel. Okay, what do we have? I have some decent stuff. And some bony soil. That bear is really going on a tear after that rabbit, isn't he? Well, with him out of commission, I think we should go in the opposite direction. What do you guys think? What a landscape. Aside from the bears... Oh, wow, look at those. Aside from the bears, this is quite idyllic. This would have been an amazing place for our little base. There's some crazy crags here, too. Wow. Easy access to Larch on those mountains. This would be a really nice little place. Although it is a bit north, so it would be a little colder than we're used to already. I saw on the map up here there is a trader. Let's go and see what they happen to have. Reminds me of the Silver Mountains back in the first season. But after a gander here at the mountains and visiting our trader buddy, I think we will hightail at home. Especially since this trader is in a bunch of really bad overgrowth. That just screams bears and wolves at me. Hello, agriculture trader. Okay. Not really what I wanted to find here, but that's okay. Well, I will probably never come visit you ever again, so... Nice to meet you, McRae. But we are headed home for now. Alright, everyone, we're going to head back home, and then we'll take stock of all the things we found and some of the exotic supplies and other odds and ends that we come across. See you there! Okay, everyone, we are home at last, safe and sound. And while I do make this maybe look like a bit more of a carefree romp in the woods and across the fields than it really is, but honestly, I think that as of this version of the game, adventuring in Vintage Story just feels so much more dangerous and deadly because at any moment, a bear could pop out from behind a blade of grass and just take your head off, absolutely knock your block off. There also seem to be a lot more wolves than I remember there being in previous versions of the game. So, yeah, just watch out for bears. I, I, I don't really appreciate their presence, honestly. I think I enjoy adventuring without them a lot more. Anyway, up in this chest, we have all of the spoils of our adventures today. And this thing is almost full, by the way, so let's take a look. Wow. Look at that. We got... Almost five stacks of aged logs, half a stack of aged wooden planks, an aged wooden table and chair, some more aged wooden crates, some blue wallpaper, two aged wooden beds, nice and comfy for us for the long winter nights, a beautiful owl chest, some awesome legacy bookshelves. Again, these are the non-interactive bookshelves. We got some rusty gears, a lot of bony soil, some new bling, some spider webs for decorating attics, some grim granite cobble skull, two aged torch holders, which these have been great to have early on in the game because, yeah, lighting is an issue early game. A loam planter with a unique pattern on it. 
So this is the, so I can get a better angle, here we go. This is the loam planter pattern. It's a pretty cool look. I'm pretty sure there are some traders who will buy these, but these are so rare, I don't think it's really worth selling them unless you just don't like decorating. We found some metal parts, a hunter shirt. This is actually a shirt that belongs to the hunter class. We found 20 chalk stones, and most of this stuff is from either resources gathering or just from forge vessels, but we got chalk stones, some galena, some flax fibers, a bit of rye grain, 10 more terra preta, 9 more cabbage seeds. I think we must have gotten 3 more from another vessel. Some more bamboo stakes. These are amusing. We'll come back to these in a moment. A lot of cattails, and a wee bit of bismuth and night. That, all in all, is a gigantic haul. This is a great haul, and we'll be able to use some of this in our future builds, probably mostly the aged wooden planks and these logs, but also I want to use the table and chair. We'll probably set up one of the beds in our own bedroom, and this owl treasure chest as like a little hope chest at the end of the bed, and we will definitely use these torch holders and probably these books, and probably the cobble skull. So these are some fun building materials that you might not realize you have access to unless you go adventuring in, well, in the deep places and in the far places across the land. But now that we're back home and it is already almost mid-June, there are some new things to look at that I want to get into in the next episode, mostly regarding something out here, namely these bushes. These bushes are going to be rather inordinately important for the next episode, and you're going to find out why. I hope you enjoy that bit of a teaser, but just to distract you before you yell at me in the comments, let's take a look at what we can do with this bamboo. There are a couple of silly and fun things we can do with bamboo, and now that we have enough to do both options, I wanted to look at them with you. So bamboo can be used to make hats. Oops. Hats. Hats. I said... Oh, only takes one. Wow. So you can make a bamboo cone hat with bamboo, or if you want some more shade, a big bamboo cone hat. And I thought this was a fun thing to do to look at with you guys and see how we look with this silly bamboo on our heads. So there we are with a regular sized bamboo cone hat for working in the fields. And if we wanted to go for the extra shade, we could wear the big bamboo cone hat. I think I won't wear them, but I wanted to show you what you can do with them, because they are kind of funny. And while we're on the topic of hats, you can also make straw hats. And I think they're made like something like this. You know, we're going to just do the good old handbook straw hat. Ah, takes two of each. There we go. And these also go on your head. These are a bit more... Southerly fisherman gonna go looking for crocodiles or something in the lake. Even has a bit of a little haystalk feather coming out of it. Pretty funny. Anyway, everyone, that is going to about do it for this episode. I hope this episode of Adventure was a bit enlightening as far as what materials that you can find out in the wild, in the deep places, in the places that aren't really renewable. These are some more of the more exotic materials we can find. And I do wish we had found some of the red clay from that builder, because I really want to use some of that in our build. So I'm probably going to go back in a couple days here and there and just sort of check out what he has every time he refreshes his stock. And I think maybe in the next episode, or maybe after the next episode, because next episode I think is spoken for, and you will see why. But I think after that, I want to go through one or both of these and go down to these areas here and have a bit of a jaunt around. I want to find some more traders because we still have not found a luxuries goods trader and we still haven't found a treasure hunter trader. And both of those I think are pretty important to, well, to me. And the treasure hunter trader is important to us as far as experiencing the story of Vintage Story. And I'm kind of surprised we haven't found one yet, given all the traders we have found. But we also haven't been exploring quite as far and wide as we did in the first season, because the game just does feel that much more dangerous, especially since we don't have any Tier 2 armor yet. 
and our copper armor we don't really want to wear while we're exploring because it slows us down, meaning that wolves and bears can catch us while we're trying to run away. So, with that, I bid all of you farewell. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And as always, my name has been Korazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.